Good morning. Welcome to Zora Lutheran Church. It's wonderful to worship with you today. You know, today is a special day. We are going to honor Luke the Evangelist, the author of the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, and he teaches us that Jesus is our Savior and our Messiah. So we're going to spend some time with him today. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we are forever grateful for our Messiah and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are grateful for his blessings. Help us to share his blessings with others. And may we worship today with great joy. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. At this time, let us have confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, you inspired your servant Luke to reveal in his gospel the love and healing power of your son. Give your church the same love and power to heal and to proclaim your salvation among the nations to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, your son, our healer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading for today will be Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snake is broken. We have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson for today comes in two parts. It is the first verses of Luke 1, the beginning of the gospel, and then the final verses of chapter 24, the end of the gospel lesson. So the gospel according to Luke chapter 1. Luke writes, Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. I too have decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. And then from chapter 24, before he ascended, Jesus said to the disciples and their command, companions, these are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the scriptures. And he said to him, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple Blessing God, the gospel of our Lord. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. This Sunday we honor St. Luke, the physician. Luke is thought to be the author of both the gospel of Luke and of the book of Acts. In fact, Acts picks up the story of the church right after the end of the Gospel of Luke. And so sometimes you'll hear it referred to as Luke-Acts, as though it were one book, and we possibly should be reading it as one book. But Acts then gives us the story of the early church and how it was founded and how it developed. Luke was not an eyewitness to the life of Jesus. He was not one of the disciples. Um, he wasn't around at that point. He never saw Jesus. He was thought to be an early Gentile convert um, to the Christian faith that was just developing here. And he, he wasn't even a Jew. He is thought to be a friend of Paul. In fact, he probably traveled with Paul on one or more of Paul's journeys to the new church. 
The writing of both Luke and Acts are dedicated to Theophilus. We don't really know much about him, but he was probably a, a Roman official. Luke was a physician, but he was also a, a scholar and a historian. And he notes that he wants to write an orderly account, meaning he did his homework before he wrote the gospel. Luke the physician, Luke was a physician. We sometimes refer to Jesus as the great physician. Luke was interested in healing the body. Jesus did a lot of that too. As you see him go about the countryside healing the, those who were ill, making the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the lame to walk, showing God's comfort for all. But Jesus was also interested in healing people's souls, healing their lives, healing their hurts, making them feel well again, comforting the fearful, offering forgiveness and peace to all who suffered. Healing the body, healing the soul played a big part in Jesus' ministry while he was here on earth. Healing. The people who stood before Jesus were desperate. They were very, very poor. They were often hungry. They were desperate. They lived under the oppression of, of Roman rule, which was very cruel. And Jesus had compassion on them. He comforted them. He healed their bodies, yes, but he healed their souls. He forgave their sins. He loved them. Healing. Healing in a desperate place. Well, our world is kind of a desperate place today, too. We could use a little healing, I think. There's always COVID. COVID has changed our lives unimaginably. Over a million people around the globe have died of COVID. That's just overwhelming. Could certainly use some healing from COVID. Then out west, the wildfires are raging and burning thousands of acres. People are losing virtually everything, their homes, their businesses, everything. That could probably use a little healing and a little comfort. And then there's always Louisiana. They just got hit by another hurricane in the same place as, as Laura hit. And people who had just gotten their electricity finally restored are now without power again. I suspect they could use some comforting too. And if that weren't enough, now we have racial problems going on, uh, which isn't new. We have demonstrations. Some of them are peaceful, which is what they set out to be. Sometimes it doesn't end that way. And people of color still seem to suffer from discrimination that destroy, destroys their lives and their hopes. That could use a lot of healing, yeah. We're living in some pretty desperate times. So we cry out to God to heal all of this, to end it all. We sure want an end to COVID. Um, vaccine, um, a cure, we don't care what it is so long as we can go back to hugging the people around us. We don't care what it is. We just want to go back to having our families together and our friends together without being afraid. We could use an end to the fires and the hurricanes, and we could certainly use an end to violence on the streets, and we want justice for all people without regard to the color of their skin. This is just not the kind of world that we want to be living in. And we cry out to God, how long? None of this seems to be going away anytime soon. And God seems to be silent. 
We are not living in the kind of world that we would like it to be. I don't think we're living in the kind of world God wants it to be either. In the midst of all that is going on, we sometimes aren't the kind of people we would like to be as well. We just want all this bad stuff to end. And we cry out to God, where are you? Why are you letting this go on? Where is the good news in the time of COVID and racial violence and storms? And God seems to be silent. So how do we as Christians live in the time of COVID? First, I think we need to remember that we don't confuse God's silence with God's absence. God is still present. God is still God. God still hears our cries. God still hears our pleadings. God is still present in our lives, in this world. So how do we live in the time of COVID? I think we live as Luke's friend Paul said we do. We live by faith. And sometimes living by faith means waiting. And much as we don't like it, sometimes there aren't going to be any answers, at least not for a while. And so we live by faith. Faith is what sustains us when our prayers seem to be bouncing off the ceiling. Faith is what sustains us when we aren't getting answers that we want so desperately. Faith is what sustains us when nothing seems to change and this bad stuff just keeps going on and on and on. When COVID cases continue to rise and storms continue to pound us and wildfires continue to burn, faith sustains us through the storms. Faith doesn't always scatter away all the darkness. Faith doesn't always make things right again but faith will guide our steps in the night and faith will get us through the day. God does hear our complaints and is still there. He will get us through the day. Will COVID go away? Will people of all races then get along? Will all be well again? We pray that that will be true someday, knowing that someday may not come as soon as we would want it to. We can mourn, we can be angry, we can be enraged by the state of our country and the world. We can be annoyed by having to wear masks all the time and to having to social distance. And it's okay, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to yell, it's okay to complain. The psalmist did a lot of that. They did a lot of lamenting. And God, after all, invited us to bring all of our cares and our fears and our anger to him, that he would listen. But we can still, in the midst of this, be on the receiving end of God's presence and God's grace through those around us who are there, who love us, who comfort us. That's God working through them. And we can offer support and love to the people around us, passing on God's love and God's grace, even if we have to be six feet apart. God is still God. God is still present. God is still a loving and caring and healing God. And that is our good news. That is our healing. May we know God's love, God's peace, and God's healing this day and always. Amen.
Hello again. So I want to share with you, I guess you can call it a little temple talk, and it has to do with this season that is often known as stewardship season. I wanted to tell you a little story about my own life. First of all, I love the Lord, and I love to share the blessings of the Lord with others. But as I have grown older, my feelings about giving and how to give have changed. I want to read to you a Bible verse. It's from 2 Corinthians, uh, the ninth chapter. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And this is the word of the Lord. And so it does give me great joy to give. I love to give. Ask my family. I always am a giver. But I do want to share that when I was much, much younger, and our church passed out some type of a, a little pledge or an offering promise or an intent card like, like Zor is um, sharing with us all now, um, I was not very organized. And I was such a procrastinator. And and, and I tried to make a budget, and I wasn't good at it. And I would get behind. If I missed church for some reason because I had to work every other Sunday, I would get behind. If maybe I needed to pay my water bill instead of my, my church offering, I would get behind. I tell you, by the end of the year, my mother-in-law would say, Cindy, how are you doing with your pledge card? Because she was always just a re very organized giver. And it always seemed like in my 20s and 30s that it was Christmas time and I was catching up because, yes, I loved to give, but I wasn't an organized giver. Now, later in life, took me a while, maybe I was a slow learner, later in life, supporting the church, so important to me, the ministries, the food pantries, the community meals, the different ways we help our youth uh, go on mission trips and things like that, helping keep our facilities in proper shape for worship. All these things have always been important to me. But as I have grown older, I have discovered a way to do it in an organized fashion so that I can always remain a cheerful giver. And so I just want to let you know, my husband and I have found that we love online giving. We love it. Because you know, sometimes we might go on a vacation Sometimes we might worship at a different church because I'm an interim pastor. And what we like to do is in the beginning of the year, we actually kind of look at something like this, an offering plan, an intent plan, a promise plan, because we want to give to the Lord. And we kind of break it up over the year, and it helps us to know how much each week or each month we are going to just automatically give. We love it. And so my hope is, is that you, like me, love to share your blessings with others. You love to support your church. I'm telling you what, Zor, there's so many beautiful ministries going on here. Time, talent, and treasures is shared throughout the whole year by so many people. This church is so generous. But I'm just saying, might you, like me, want to be a little bit more organized with how you give? So there's something called Banco. It's an online giving program. And I'm sure if you have any questions, you can call the church office. So at this moment in the service is when we do share our time, our talents, our treasures through our offering. Have a blessed day.
Greetings, sisters and brothers. Great to be with you. I'm Pastor Tim. We're still here at Zora Lutheran Church and so glad that you're able to be with us. So if you haven't heard this, I encourage you to text in the number to the number printed here so that uh, we have an accounting of who's able to watch us and uh, make connections through that way. That would really be awesome. Also to let you know, uh, people in the hospital, Ty Swope has had surgery at University of Michigan. Gary Holfinger is at home. Bill Alt is now in hospice care here in Perrysburg. And upcoming surgery this next week include Alan Schroeder and Brecken Price. And we'll have a graveside for two members of Zor, a graveside funeral on Monday. Lloyd Finch and his wife, Jane Finch. Jane used to be Jane Stortz. So we hold on to them and their families. I invite you now to pray with me. Holy Jesus, Lord of all creation, we continue to thank you for the beauty and the blessing of autumn, of the colors that you have given us, of the trees and the plants and the flowers. Even as the leaves fall, your beauty is just evident everywhere. Bless us as these days become shorter. Bless us as the nights get longer. Bless us as the cool weather wraps around us. Bless us with all the changes that you are the one who never changes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we're also coming closer to election. We pray for our president and our governor and our mayor. We pray for all running for office. We pray for the election process, that your peace and your wisdom may guide your people. We pray for this country, Lord, that there may be uh, justice for all, for all people of color, for all people in our world, we pray for justice for your people and that there may be peace in this process. Bless us, holy God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on doctors and nurses and technicians and first responders. We pray for all who are in COVID and ask your healing blessing. But we also lift up Ty Slope and Gary Holfinger and Bill Alt. Alan Schroeder, and Brecken Price. Bless them, O Lord, and let them know the healing strength of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As autumn comes to a middle and we get closer to winter, often, O Lord, our thoughts go to the end of the world. So we pray for those who have died, knowing and trusting they're in your arms. We give thanks for Lloyd Finch and Jane Finch, we give you thanks for our loved ones who rest in your arms and, for, and the promise that one day when we die, you are already there with arms wide open in joy. Thank you, holy God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And keep us, O oh Lord, into your hands. Keep us in this congregation as we proclaim your name. Bless all congregations who speak of your grace. Bless all people everywhere who know love and are willing to share that presence. Hold on to us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings.